some of you are here today like I don't need to know maybe this from someone that's maybe achieved at a different level than you have. But I would say looking back on my journey and I'm 49, going to be 50 next year, looking forward to the next 10 years, like I feel like I'm just getting started and I feel like I've made so many mistakes and I figured some things out and all of it points back to what I'm going to teach you today. If that is not a good enough setup, I don't know what to tell you guys. So the whole point in my journey has been how to make more money in less time with less stress. Guys, you have to measure time, money, and stress. I just want you to constantly think about those three things. Either you have a ton of time, but you have no money, right? Because you're not working hard enough, maybe. You may have a ton of money, but you have no time because you're, you're humping it in your real estate business. And typically, if you're involved in a lot of transactions and you don't have leverage and you haven't thought through systems, you're going to have a lot of stress. And I don't want stress for, for any of you. So Reb's Productivity Pack, there, there's a, a download that you can grab that comes along with a training video. There's no agenda here except to give those of you that want to look at where you spend your time honestly in a very simple system to create an awesome week, to learn how to delegate, and to learn how to honestly look at your time. All right, so so that's just a gift from me. So why does this matter? This whole conversation around time and money and stress is that I have a 12 and 15 year old. And uh, when I first got into real estate, we only had one and then it turned into two. And then, you know, instantly it was this, right? We're working when we, when we shouldn't be working or where, you know, we think we're, we have a life of freedom, but we're like Friday at 930, we're like, sneaking away from date night or, you know, I snuck out of bed at times when I would get like an internet lead. I'm like, it's only 905. Surely I can respond to this lead and not annoy them. So for me, that that's what it was. My son, this guy right here just started driving two weeks ago. He is an inch taller than me, 6'1". And uh, luckily I was able to figure out some of these things before he got too old. I don't think he really knows that I'm not paying attention as eating his bottle. I and mean, he thinks on the left there that my phone is a toy, but we live in a time where it's easy to get sidetracked. There's no, no, even a little bit of preaching in anything I will say. I have struggled. I have made all the mistakes. I've let down my family. I have done things and dismissed loved ones in ways that I'm not proud of. And I justified it at the time. Even most recently, I, I went into a spiral into news and a bunch of crap that I couldn't control after 10 years of being off it because it's so tempting. Whatever that is for you, if it's social media or news or Netflix, whatever it is, this is a crazy time, right? Everyone is after our attention and we just have a lot to do. There are, this is worth writing down. There are 12 jobs that a real estate agent has to do, right? So I'm not going to go through them all, but someone has to systematically generate leads. Somebody has to follow up with those leads. Somebody has to have all the lead management, lead nurture system. Someone has to meet with would-be buyer and seller clients for the first time, show them homes, take photos, get them listed on MLS, you know, do this, you know, all the stuff. There's like 10 things to do, contractor closing and all of it. And I just thought about it differently back in the day, you know, and this is a journey. I don't care where you are today. This is a journey that every 90 days you're going to get to decide some things. And it go, goes back to that productivity pack where I'll teach you that. A little bit of a downer to start it off in, in a hole, but there's definitely hope. The scorecard, not the only scorecard, right? I, I believe in way more than money. The point, though, of being in business is to systematically increase your net worth end time away from the office and put the things that matter most in your life first. So if you were to grade yourself on a scale of one to five, and if you guys can get in the chat, if you're willing to be vulnerable and honest, how good do you feel about the next two to three years where you are right now with your ability to systematically increase your net worth and take a bunch of time off and focus on the things that matter most? One, you do not have it figured out. Five, you have it figured out. I would love to hear where you guys are at. And please be honest. Shay is all over it. Five exclamation. Two, five, awesome. Three, one. Yeah, when I started in real estate, I was not where I am today. I was a one. I was like less than a one. You know, so there's no shame in, in, in being where you're at. And we just move forward from there. So let's talk about how we get there. So 
the number one thing is knowing your net worth. This calculation that I'm going to take you through, I did it the beginning of my first full year in real estate. That was when I knew nothing. I had never sold anything before. I was licensed for less than a year. So this is something that will really help you guys. This is worth screenshotting if you're able. Very simple concept. I read this. I wouldn't recommend reading the book because I remember nothing about the book. But at the time, it was Dan Kennedy's second edition of No BS Time Management for Entrepreneurs. And it was a chapter in the book. And I think I did the calculation wrong, but I calculated it two ways. Essentially, and we I didn't call it business. He doesn't call it business freedom index. I just put a little TM next to that and claimed it as my own. So the business freedom index is just looking at the amount of money you make and dividing it by the hours that you work. So essentially, how many hours are you giving away of your life as it relates to the money that you're making? Coming out of 2007, you know, I worked 10 months, but it was roughly 2000 hours, which is 200 hours a month, about 50 hour work week. I grossed 250. My broker took like 75, which was not a great deal because I generated all my own business. And then I netted 37,000. So do the quick math on that. 37,000 divided by 2000 hours is $18 and 50 cents an hour. That's where I started out in real estate. And then I don't know where I got this part, but he, Dan Kennedy didn't say this in the book. I decided in that moment that I was going to make $500,000 a year pre-tax. And I wanted to work 40 hours a week, 2000 hours a year. And I did simple math. And I remember writing this number everywhere. 500,000 divided by 2000 is $250 per hour. It took me a few years to figure it out. Then I increased it to $500 an hour. It took me a couple of years to figure that out. 2014, seven years after I got into real estate, I made just over $3,000 an hour, which I thought was pretty cool. And I took like 12 weeks of vacation that year. I worked 42 days. It didn't happen overnight. For somebody of you, you have no desire to maybe have a bigger business, but this concept of looking at your time against the money that you make is critically important. Only if you want to make more money in less time, which it'd be crazy if you didn't want to, right? You get you you earn traditional success as a real estate agent. I don't believe it's a life worth living, right? Because you will be working every evening and weekend. Yes, you'll have money, but you won't have time and you'll have massive stress. You have to know your number where you're at right now and you have to know where you want to go. And when you know the delta between the two, so take my example, making 20 bucks an hour, I wanted to get to $250 an hour. I mentally thought about, like, realistically, I told myself that I could get anything off of my plate that I can pay someone 50 bucks or less per hour. And it, like, it wasn't a flip of a switch, but it was a mindset shift where I could get someone to help me input listings. I got a licensed assistant that I paid $20 an hour. Actually, I started her at 14 part-time and within two weeks, she said, I'm going to come on full-time and I'm, I'm going to require 20 bucks an hour. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. So at 20 bucks an hour, she took at least 40 hours of work that I would have had to do. And I just doubled down on the activities that got me paid. And I'm going to go through the five activities that pay in real estate here in a second. But you've got to know these numbers. You guys have to just trust me that this calculation will serve you if you really understand it. And the second thing is that we have to be honest with ourselves about what does it really mean to be productive? And this definition Maybe the book is worth reading because this definition is from that same book from Dan Kenny, No BS. I think he has a third edition now, but productivity is the deliberate strategic investment of your time, talent, intelligence, energy, resources, and opportunities in a manner calculated to move you measurably closer to meaningful goals. So if you were to ask yourself at the end of every day on a scale of one to five using this definition of productivity how did I do today? It'd be hard to lie to yourself. Was I deliberate and strategic today with my time, my talents, you know, my intelligence, my energy, my resources, my opportunities? Did I, did I move measurably closer to meaningful goals in the areas of life that matter most to me, right? So I think a lot of real estate agents are doing a lot of things all day long, but mainly when it comes down to it, and that time study that you guys have access to through RebsProductivityPack.com, that will highlight this very clearly for you. And then you just need to deal with it. It doesn't affect me if you deal with it, right? But your ability to get out of your own way and do the things that make you more money. And I'll go through those things I think is really, really important. This is another screenshot. I don't think this game is ever going to change in any business, right? Maybe some SaaS, maybe for street text. Maybe, maybe you guys have figured out 
you know, how to get people to sign up for your awesome technology without having too many conversations. But in real estate, there's not a way to skip number one and, you know, just go to the client for life. And so we've got the, the, the front top of funnel is the different ways that we can generate leads. We've got to systemize that. You can't wake up every day and wonder if leads are going to come in. You've got to figure out a way to have meaningful conversations. 90 plus percent of people aren't going to be ready to do anything. So you've got to have follow-up sequences, all of that. When you set appointments, you have to have a specific way you do it. When they meet with you, they're pre-sold on your services. Most of them, if not all of them, sign up to help you. You know, you're going to be the one to help them buy or sell their home. And then you have a process by, by you know, contract to close and servicing that client that leaves them happier than when they met you. And most agents barely get to the closing table. You do all of that in the right way. It's this virtuous cycle that takes care of itself. But if you're struggling to grow your sales and scale your real estate business, it's likely that you're not looking at your business this way like a business. And you're likely only some of these things are working some of the time. We were generating so many appointments at a time that we went to a virtual consultation process where we recorded our buyer, buyer consultation and our listing consultation. So we would actually have buyers and sellers watch our listing presentation. And so we don't have to have dedicated salesperson giving those presentations. So it's it's really cool when you want, once you wrap your head around this. So let me go through the five things that get you paid. The, these you guys have to write down. Number one is prospecting. And I don't love that word, but it works for the plans. Prospecting, I call it new business development. There's no one in sales in any industry that is achieving at the top few percent of the industry that doesn't do new business development on a regular basis. You probably couldn't find someone who's less, uh, it's not my natural way to sell or to talk to people, but I knew when I got into the business that this was my, my leadingest indicator. How many meaningful conversations could I have every day with a decision-making adult about real estate? Number two is lead follow-up. Most people aren't ready to go. Your lead follow-up conversations and systems are critical. And then the appointments or consultations, right? How many times a week are you sitting down with a buyer or seller that's not listed with another agent and presenting your services? And do you actually have frameworks and presentations and standardized processes around that? And is negotiating buyers and sellers under contract? Not necessarily appraisal negotiations or repair negotiations. Those are important, but they don't necessarily pay as much money. And then S is systems. So prospecting, lead follow-up, appointments, negotiating contracts and systems. And then if you were to look at where you spend your time, how much of your time is spent doing those things versus anything else? Typically, what I see is about 20% of agents' time are spent doing these things and 80% are doing a bunch of other things, right? So you just have to be honest with yourself. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I've, I've studied how to grow and scale a real estate business at nauseum. There's all these different elements. I'll just show it to you in this version where we've just identified four drivers and these outer pieces are called accelerators where you have to be thinking about your database marketing, listing marketing, and buyer marketing, putting, systemizing your marketing so those leads come in automatically. You have to have a lead management system, an appointment setting, a consultation process, and all the other things, right? Most agents don't have an ability to scale because they haven't sort of put a construct around their business. Let me cover the last uh, part here. My hope is that this will be maybe the most painful to hear, but maybe the most valuable. So, and this is part of that productivity pack that you guys can download. But to me, there's massive freedom and structure. When I decide that I'm going to work, I am so intentional in every minute of my day, but I know that I've only picked a certain number of hours a day to work and I'm going to fill them with the highest dollar productive activities. You have to believe that in order to do it all, all, you have to think about what your ideal week looks like, not just to do real estate whenever it happens and haphazardly and willy nilly, but really being strategic about where you want to spend your time. So you could be an awesome real estate agent. You could be an awesome wife or husband. You can be an awesome parent. You can be an awesome sibling, right? You can do all the things you want. You can spend time with your creator. You can work out every day. We want you to do all the things. And I think just being intentional around that. So this is not rocket science. When you really understand the power of time blocking and then you look at your calendar on a weekly basis and you're like, man, I've got it time blocked, but these five things are not the highest and best use of my time. 
I've got to get some leverage around that. I have to delegate those. I have to automate. You've got to really lean into this stuff and, and do it. This is worth screenshotting. Normally I'll share the link to the Google calendar of this. I just don't have it prepared. Well, really once a year, you set up your year, like how you think it's going to roll. Every morning you do the same thing, at least Monday through Friday. Then you do the next thing. Then you do the next thing. Then you have every day You've got to do new business development, right? So that's a three-hour time block, 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off. You've got to, we were a team structure, but you can erase that. Then you have a little bit of office work. During your new, new biz dev time, you're not doing any email or anything like that. Lead follow-up every day. You crush the first five hours of your day or four and a half hours, and you will create so much opportunity for your afternoon. You won't even recognize the agent that you become in 12 or 24 months from now, right? But then you have appointments slots open where when you're on the phone, it's like, oh, Marcus. So, you know, we're talking on, on a Thursday, Marcus, I have tomorrow at 2 PM open, or we could do 4 PM. If you and your uh, wife can get out of, uh, get out of work a little bit early. Oh, you don't have 7 PM. I have an appointment at 7 PM. It's like, man, can we get together on, you know, on the weekend? I do take appointments on Saturday, but we have to be ready to go. Like if you guys would be serious about moving this thing forward, if I get together with you on a Saturday, you control the tone. I, for two years straight, I had three listing appointments every Saturday. It was just like clockwork. I did nine, 10, 30, and I think 12 or something. So I knew I could get at least two of them, if not all three. And it was really good money. I negotiated it with my wife. She was okay with it until she wasn't, until it was like, oh, you're gone again. But then date night every week, right? So that's not negotiable. Church is not negotiable. Weekly planning is not negotiable, right? Some of these things are just not negotiable. Two nights a week, I negotiated with my wife to take later appointments, not seven, but six o'clock. And I told her I'd be home before eight. And it was just pre-negotiated. Eat That Frog, a uh, really good book. I think it's Brian Tracy talks about like the, the frog in a salesperson's life. The analogy is like, if you had to eat a really big, nasty frog, when's the best time to do it? You know, first thing in the morning or look at it all day long on your desk, just riveting at you like ribbit, ribbit like nasty frog just eat it eat the frog first thing and you'll feel so good about it because you won't have to look at it all day long that's that new business development time block and then just be honest with yourself for those of you that are up for the challenge of doing the time study just be honest with yourself you know stop telling yourself that you want to you want to really succeed at a high level in real estate if you're not willing to just make some trade-offs with where you spend your time. For the most part, I'm not going to go through this case study, although it's really cool. Dave sold 35 homes the year I met him and fast forward like four years later, 350 homes. He just spent 30 days at, in the Galapagos Island with no cell phone at all. So as long as you kind of know where you're going and you have a plan to get there and you're honest with your time and you understand the relationship between time and money, this knowing your worth, you know, being productive, not busy, the freedom and structure, RevsProductivityPack.com. No agenda there. I just want you guys to have these tools. I put this in after the really smart dude was talking uh, right before me. Real estate business builders, you know, it's just a community of agents that I do some free training in there as well. So you guys can jump into that community. And then I would just say, do the work. This is the best time. I think even better than when I got into real estate. We are going to go through some crap economically that I think is just going to weed so many agents out of our market. And the agents that even stay in are going to be so messed up in their head that they're probably not going to be able to function at the level you'll be able to function if you just make the decision to get your world to be really small. Don't let the rest of the world into your world and just do the work on a daily basis. That is my best advice. We have not any time for questions, but I certainly can take some. Yeah, let's take a question real quick. Just one question. So whoever gets to it first, boom, you get it. That was amazing. Uh, wow. Usually we save this stuff, like we get the, the gold in the beginning, but you're, you're bringing it at the end. I, I love it. And I would say, you know, here's the thing. Like, I get this a lot. I, I, I get it a lot. Like, it's almost like it's easier for you to say you've already achieved it. But I remember like it was yesterday, how hard it was to have a young family to, to want to do other things, but you're already wound up into this real estate thing and it just takes over your life. And so this process, just that, that simple productivity pack, you do that on every 90 days and just commit to it. It's very simple, but that is like the one thing I can point to that I just did it every 90 days and other people didn't. And it's been like, what, 15 years? 
you know? And I'm like, man, next 10 years are going to be like even more epic. Like, I feel like all of this is just a, a foundation for what's possible in the future. So no matter where you are in your journey, you can just decide today to go through some of that stuff. It's an awesome time to do it, right? This, this fourth quarter, you know, is deliberate because we're looking at a, um, one of the hardest years I think a lot of us will see and which makes it awesome because if you dig in and you, you ignore all the stuff that's out there, all right, guys, well, much love, much respect. You guys let me know if I can ever do anything else for you guys.